Yep. Okay. All right. So, welcome to Permanent Services Committee. Um, we'll go ahead and take um, a roll call. Alder Campbell. Here. Alder Weary. Here. Alder Stoyer. I am here. Okay. <laughs> all right. And I'm here. So, uh, we're all here. So, um, go ahead and looking for an approval of the agenda. Make motion approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. You got to amend. Aye. Uh, oh, we need to amend, yes. Right. So, are you going to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to amend it to uh, take these items first <clears throat> E4, 5, and 7, right. and then we'll go to number one. So, yeah. 4, 5, 7, then 1. Yeah. So, um, Alder Berry makes a motion to move. E4, 5, and 7 before E1, and we get a second from Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that is approved. Um, so, approval of the minutes. Looking for an approval. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. So, we will go ahead and start with E4. Consideration with possible action on request by Alder Hutchison on behalf of Mike Mick, Mick, 426 Easy Street to have sidewalk ordered along the south side of Sitka Street between Robert Lane and McCullough Heights Trail at all locations where sidewalk does not currently exist. Director. Okay. Uh, we provided you some information in the packet. When Sitka, uh, Sitka Street was last reconstructed uh, between Superior and Ontario Road in 2020, uh, during the reconstruction, staff consulted with the Department of Community and Economic Development to determine the need for sidewalk along Sitka. Uh, under current zoning ordinance, sidewalk would be required on one side of Sitka, and that service was selected to be the south side. Uh, following past practice, sidewalks are required to be installed as a property is developed. A significant number of properties have either now been developed or have previously been developed, and there is a number of lots where homes existed previous uh, to the reconstruction. Residents in the area have noticed an increase in pedestrian activity, accompanied by an increase in vehicular traffic on Sitka Street, resulting in a perceived unsafe situation placing pedestrians in proximity to vehicles. So what I'm going to do is quickly share uh, a screen here. And um, I want to just say that um, our attachment is not working. It just says, yeah, you know, I don't saw that. reader. <laughs> okay. Just That's why I'm providing you with a share like screen to show the attachment. Updating now. Okay. So oh, no. this yeah. shows okay. Sitka beginning at Robert. Uh, so this is the, the western edge of the request. So along the south side here at Robert, uh, proceeding to the east, there would be sidewalk installed uh, between Robert and Easy. Then this is Easy, from Easy continuing on east down toward Ontario. Now, there are, at the time this photo was taken, uh, aerial photos from 2020, so it doesn't reflect. There's actually one home on uh, what shows to be three vacant green parcels. There's actually one home built here that does have sidewalk. And then on the north side of the berm here of these, what show as undeveloped parcels, there's actually sidewalk there as well. But then a discontinuity again here as we approach Ontario, between Ontario and uh, Bradley, there is sidewalk, but between Bradley and McCullough Heights Trail, um, there's sidewalk on the west half of that block, but not on the east half. So we did, um, receive a request from one of the area residents, Mr. Mitch, uh, who I can personally attest, I see walking in this area almost on a daily basis. Uh, so I drive this, uh, this street every day. Uh, I can concur that uh, both pedestrian and vehicular traffic has increased out here as development has occurred. Uh, and with the discontinuity in the sidewalk, there is a uh, there, we're finding a need that folks are having to walk in the street, uh, placing them in conflict with uh, motorized traffic. 
Now typically, again, what has happened is as properties are developed, sidewalk is installed. However, there are a number of properties out here that were developed prior to um, the Sitka reconstruction. So those would, uh, would not be ordered or would not have sidewalk required until such time the council ordered it in to close the gaps. Um, we have talked about policy and, and past practice. Um, so I'm going to again go back to the beginning at Robert. We have the house on the corner of southeast corner of Robert and Sitka has a driveway facing out onto Robert and there is no sidewalk on Robert at this time. So that sidewalk on the north side would be discontinuous from the driveway or from direct access. That would be a city cost. Um, the house uh, on the corner, southwest corner of uh, Easy is in the same situation as is the house on the southeast corner of Robert. Now we get to these three parcels uh, that currently show as vacant, but actually are developable lots. The way that those, the only access that those lots have is out to Sitka, which would place the sidewalk crossing the lot. That means that those property owners would be financially responsible for the installation and all maintenance of that sidewalk. Then we have the existing sidewalk on the north side of this subdivision. This is uh, Bradley Estates. Um, again, there's a berm actually there that provides a, a, a break between where the, the side or where the home where the home is and where the sidewalk is, resulting in a double frontage. Uh, this property on the corner of Ontario, not only it's a side yard, but it has continuous access from the, uh, from the sidewalk on Ontario. So this property would be financially responsible for the installation and maintenance of that walk. Again, between uh, Ontario and Christie Lee, uh, there's already sidewalk there, but we'd have to extend and put the ramp in. I actually think that went in a year ago. Uh, I don't think there's a break there in the... There is no ramp there? The ramp is there. The ramp is, is okay. Um, and then between Christy Lee and, uh, and McCall Heights Trail, um, sidewalk would have to be installed with a ramp connecting to the, the east side of McCall Heights Trail. So overall, based off of an initial projection, uh, we're anticipating that that would be approximately $155,000 in capital outlay uh, on behalf of the city to accomplish all that work. Over on top of what it's going to cost each of the property owners. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, are you, did you want to say anything, Alder Hutchison? Um, I think uh, Director Grenier did an excellent job showing what's going on there. I am on that street two or three times a week on my bike, and I did notice before I got the call, there was almost every time I'm on that road, there's a pedestrian or some, a bike or something that could more readily be on the sidewalk and safer. Um, so it's not something that happens every now and then, it happens a lot. There's a lot of pedestrian activity. So I think it warrants the construction. So I took the idea from a constituent of mine and brought it forward. Um, does anybody have any questions? No. Alder. Yes, Alder Sawyer, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Director Bernier, I just wanted to double check. So the cost of the public on this will be what? Nothing? Or, or I just need a clarification on that. No, there are there are several parcels out there. I think four parcels that would actually have to fund the sidewalk in front of the parcel, but the the total for uh, that cannot be charged back against adjacent property owners that the city would have to pick up is approximately one hundred and fifty five thousand. Okay, I you know I just know in the past where developments would come in and of course that would be a, a front end type of thing where it was in, in the development but this area is already pretty much developed. Um, it's just kind of unique. I haven't quite heard of one like this. Is, have we had a, another situation like this in the last couple of years where we've had this 
after the fact type of uh, project? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, um, Eaton Heights and Eaton Heights first edition. So we just finished the project on North Huron where we put the sidewalks in. Uh, as you head north from Humboldt Road on North Huron, the first side street you come to would be Watercrest Drive and along Watercrest, Barrenwood, and Satellite. Um, the subdivision was in and uh, needed to have this. Uh, there was a requirement during the planning process that the sidewalks be installed. A number of residents had not installed them, so council did uh, issue orders to, uh, to have that infill. Now, in that case, there were no double fronted properties, no properties that were not serviced uh, off of the streets that the sidewalk were being uh, extended along. So all costs for sidewalk were built back to the property owners in that case. So okay. the, the major difference with this one is uh, the volume of sidewalk, which is going to be a city responsibility. Okay, and, that, and the city has enough to cover that ever so, of course. Well, it, would, it would not be, there, there's not room for it in this year's capital program, so if the council were to, uh, were to want this project to move forward, we would request that this become part of uh, our capital request for the 2024 project year. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alder Steyer. Um, Alder Weary has a question. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, the, there's four or five homes I will have to put in sidewalks and pay for it. Is that kind of okay? Do, do they know this is even being talked about or proposed? No, they don't. Okay, because I, I would imagine it's going to be uh, one to two grand each or something. More, yeah, more than that. More. All of that. More. Okay. I, so just, I mean, you're okay with putting them in? I, it's your district, so I'm, you know, I'll be My safe. My district. Um, I will contact the homes that are affected and make sure they know. Okay. Know if they're the owner or. Well, I'll have them contact the owner if they are too. I mean, and if they bought the home, they probably knew at some point that they were by a park and you know, sidewalks could go in, so they probably right. had an idea of that. But, all right. the, the only one that would not have, because um, there was one, one of the corner, uh, southwest corner of Ontario, they would not have known that sidewalk was required on Sitka at the time that they built or bought. Uh, the three vacant properties, one of which has actually has a home, but the three between Robert and Ontario that face out on the Sitka, uh, that was actually a condition of their plat. So that was, they may not have no, okay, now that just because it's on the plat doesn't mean that people always catch that, but it is on their plat. <coughs> Question? Um, you have a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think of the director. Um, are there means by which uh, those who have to construct the sidewalk and the city tells them to do it, is there a financial uh, ability that the city gives them or gives them a time frame to which to pay? Or Yes. Um, with the sidewalk, much like when we used to assess on roads, or still do for the head to half assessment for uh, other than residential. Um, when the invoice comes, the invoice is listed as net 30, so you have 30 days to pay the invoice in full. Should you not pay that invoice, any outstanding balance left after 30 days is automatically spread out over the next five years and is automatically added to the income tax or your property tax statement. It is listed separately as a special charge. It That's is subject to the financing charge, which this year I believe is six and a half percent. Okay. Is there anybody here to talk on this? Or you? No. Okay. Just we have somebody sure. here, but I don't know if he wishes to address the committee. Okay. No. You're doing fine. So you just explained the payment, not plan, but yeah, it's payment plan. forced. So they get. Do they get the choice of doing it that way, or is it just assessed that way? They get the choice to pay it all up front. Yeah. Or if they choose not to pay, oh, okay. you can pay any all, all or right. none. Mm -hmm. okay. Any balance left outstanding after 30 days automatically, um, the old term for it was posted to bond. What it, okay. it goes on your, on your tax statement over five equal payments. An option. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, this is actually kind of going along with 
number three that we're going to be discussing. It does, yes. And I honestly feel that we should hold this until the property owners are notified. That's my feeling because if they don't even know about this right now, and we're discussing it, I, I just think that they should be notified. Any responses to that? <laughs> Actually, I was going to follow up with a question. Is it is this a would that include a public hearing or not? No. Okay. Uh, because it's not an assessment, it's a special okay. charge. Okay. Sidewalk is probably one of the most in, misunderstood programs that we have. Sidewalk is one hundred percent the property <laughs> owner's financial right. responsibility. So if the property owner fails to do what the what the council orders by resolution then the city has the right to come in, complete the work, and build that cost back. So it's not that we're assessing somebody, it's we're charging for we're charging a fee for a service that was provided. So as such, there is no public hearing notification that goes along with it. Okay. What about letters? What's that? Letters. letters and again, you're, you're entirely correct. This is something that's under all their, uh, all their grants communication. Yeah. I'm flaring. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah. So I, it's it's just it, you know for us to approve it right now and 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 have that where they don't know about it. I and you haven't talked to them yet. I'm uncomfortable approving it. Go ahead. I, I know Alder Stoyer was on the phone had Taylor Street. Remember? I think we held that up. So. so <laughs> The neighborhood could be notified, and we had them in, and we talked about it, and we ultimately didn't put the sidewalk in. Um, I, I, you know, I well, I think they were aware. They were aware of it at the time, that time but all the way kind of brings up a good point. Um, you know, the, and I, I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm Director Greer. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you, Chris? No, go ahead. I apologize. I was just wondering if, um, if they were notified and if not, why not? Um, that is fine. And we did, it, it, we, they said they did not, they have not been notified. So that question has been answered? Yeah. So yeah. Why, why weren't they notified? Again, there's, because it, the, the notification comes when the city adopts the resolution ordering the sidewalks oh. installed. That's the first okay. notification I get. So they're not going All right, to we got to do one. It's a step by step thing. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right, I'm good with that. Thank you. I was going to say, I, I like the idea of notifying for something like this, but I'm also a big believer that the older person knows their district and they feel comfortable with moving forward with that. I'm fine with it. And I'm, so I kind of lean that way too. I really, if you think it's needed and, and you can handle it on your end, I'm, I'm fine. But Right. My take on it is for safety. And for continuity in that neighborhood, it's called for. So I think it's justified for those reasons. Um, I totally understand notification is important. Um, so whatever you choose to do, um, I believe the people will be notified at some point. Um, if this goes ahead, I would go to their door and knock on it right away. And before the council meeting, that would uh, approve this. Okay, and I just, um, you're recommending approval? We are, and just, I guess, a little bit of clarification on, on this one. When Sitka was reconstructed in 2020, we did have a public hearing for Sitka Street, and during the public hearing, we did identify that sidewalk would be required in the future. Now, typically that happens when a property is developed. So we got a couple of lots which existed, houses that existed prior to Sitka, mm -hmm. where it was gonna take action at the Common Council to for, uh, require that sidewalk installed by resolution. Typically, once you get a subdivision, if it's a new subdivision, we let, we let the sidewalk go in as houses are built until we get to more than 50, but not more than 85%. Somewhere between that 50th and 85th percentile of development, then the sidewalk goes in everywhere. We're over 50%, not quite 85 along this stretch. Um, so whether we notify the residents or not, 
it's, it's notification, okay? This is not a, an instance, oh, the county, council has already taken action to require that sidewalk to be installed, it, it's just a matter of when. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were to get a, a general outcry from the population out here saying, I don't want to pay for that sidewalk, whether the sidewalk goes in or not is that ship already sailed. That's a decision the council already adopted three years ago. Um, so that can't be reconsidered at this point. It's just a matter of are we giving folks enough advance notification? So I, I, I don't disagree with notification if that's something that the council wants. Mm -hmm. Again, myself or Alder Hutchison, we can work with him if he wants to do it as the Alder. Um, I think there's some flexibility there uh, and provide enough notification to these folks that the sidewalk will be coming in 24 and then provide them with information. Anyone who would, would be subject to, to paying for that walk to give them notification uh, of what their options are for paying for that walk. So it's like a year notice? Yeah, Maybe not a quite, less, but little yeah, less. a little bit less. Okay. Um, Alder Campbell? So just go a little further on that, say this was a new development at one time, it was. Yep. When we approve, when it goes through the right branches, and that development is approved. Is is there etiquette in there? Is there is it or is it always different? Or is that something that we need to kind of clean up a little no, bit? No, with with new subdivisions it's a lot cleaner. Yeah. Because when the building permit is requested, we know that a house is being developed. We try to tie the sidewalk installation to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the house. But because sidewalk is not a life safety issue, we can't hold the certificate of occupancy on the sidewalk. However, when inspection department issues that CO saying that you can now move in, then we get notified and we send a letter stating, as part of your subdivision, you are required to install sidewalk at the house. You now have 30 days in which to install that walk. If you can't install it within that time, notify us, tell us when you're gonna install it. We give them the options on how to get the sidewalk in at that time, but it's triggered off of the certificate of occupancy. Okay, so not to the developer, to the sale of the property at that time as it progresses. Correct, it, it, it winds up being whoever built or bought the house, not necessarily the developer. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, looking for a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Um, okay, so Alder Weary makes a motion to approve, um, second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those not in favor say nay. So um, that passes. Aye. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mark, for the delay there, Alder Stoyer. Uh, yeah, a wave came in, I'm sorry. I'm presuming that part of that approval motion would be to include this as 2020, as part of the 2024 yes. program? Yeah, please. Please, yes. And then uh, we'll talk more about the notifications later. But, um, okay, and then so we're gonna move on to um, number five, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Mark Stoyer to extend Isbell Street south of Mason Street to the South Mason Street frontage road in order to alleviate traffic issues along the South Mason Street frontage road and to enter into agreements with adjacent property owners pursuant to this opening. Um, and this was held over from our last improvement and services meeting. Um, Director? We have no additional information to, to provide. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to make a motion to open the floor. I mean, I'm going to ask for someone to make a motion. Motion open the floor. For interested parties. And all those in favor say aye. 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 I delayed for, for story. <laughs> story. Okay. Those opposed say nay. And so that is passed. Go, uh, go ahead and um, if you want to come up and speak. Absolutely. Well, again, Garrett Bader, 300 North Van Buren Street. Um, I thought what I'd do today, just in light of what we talked about last time, is give a real brief overview of what we discussed, and then walk through 
because uh, it came up last time with just the, the traffic study synopsis over everything. And again, I'll, I'll walk through it quickly here to be respectful of everyone's time. And I have the boards again here for you to refer to anything in large. In large, uh, photos happen to do that. So thanks for being here again. Uh, last meeting, we largely talked about the overview of this corridor, largely Hinkle to, to Hobart Drive to Isbell along Mason Street, West 541. Talked about in the context of plans that I've been working on for a number of years to open up the neighborhood south of Mason for residential development to improve the commercial quality of the construction along the South Mason Street frontage road. Tie it to what the county is working on west of Packland primarily and at that Packland intersection. We did talk about the history of the South Frontage Road, why it's there, the issues that we're trying to fix. Um, how the changes are somewhat similar in many respects to what the county is doing at Packland west of there. And uh, most of all, uh, again, the questions about the, I guess, the data behind it, the study, how does it work, why does it work, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you'll start from the beginning, I'll walk through this with you all if you want. Mark, I believe I sent this by email. If you have it and want to refer to it, I won't refer by page number and promise okay. I, will, I will go very expeditiously. Do you have it? Yeah, I do have it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the opening page is just titled Technical Memorandum. It's dated yesterday. What I asked Taddy to do, and again, Taddy is the traffic design company that was used to prepare the analysis, both the original one back in 2021 and some updates as planning and design has evolved. So right off the bat, the front page, it just notes that I have highlighted there, highlighted there and read that this is the memo comparing the existing conditions today that are out there to what we call alternative E. Keep in mind, we studied five different options for the different intersections um, as study parameters. On the next page, it gives you a map of the overall image that we looked at. Again, that's on the boards. I highlighted there one, two, and three. So there are many different conditions that Alternative E looked at. There were some that would happen eventually, some that would not happen anymore, like struck out the baggage road. But items one, two, three refer to Hinkle, Hobart Drive, and Isbell, respectively. So you see the numbers there on the map related to it. Near the bottom of that page where I have number one marked, it notes that within the existing roadway system, so looking at, at everything there for Hinkle Street, you have level of service levels at E to F. So keep in mind, just like a, a grade school grading scale, A is best, F is worse, you want to be as close to A as possible. We have E and F conditions out there right now that have been studied. Um, asterisk below that is saying with adjustments proposed to traffic signal timing and the alternative E proposals, all operational issues are resolved to level of service D or better. So we improve that intersection by what we're proposing. Number three, right below that, skips to Isbell Street. You can also look at page three concurrently with this, because it kind of didn't format the best. But number three deals with Isbell. And what you'll see on the image on page two, in comparison to the image on page three, what I asked Teddy to do was look at the original traffic study for a single approach to Isbell versus a split approach, where you have two, that T intersection. Highlighted there by the asterisk underneath figure three, since traffic volumes are relatively low, all of movements at that intersection operate at level of service D or better, meaning better than the E and F even at Hinkle. This is obviously a new intersection, but acceptable from the context of an urban arterial. We'll talk a little bit more in just a second about the much lower traffic aspect. Bottom of page three, Hobart and Hinkle streets, where I call numbers two and number one, really the discussion of interim thoughts. So there it says that an interim memo was prepared on August 15th, which was yesterday, to look at the options for what would you do if you wanted to extend the Hinkle connection right away. As you may recall from last time, what I mentioned is that in discussions with planning and economic development staff, the question was raised by Neil Stick Schulte, our then economic development director at the time, how could we extend Hinkle immediately and connect it from Mason down to Hobart, open up the neighborhood right away instead of doing an interim type development? So we played with some ideas and said you have options there within the existing frontage road. Could they connect and do so in a way that would operate at an acceptable level of service? Again, if you look at the asterisk underneath figure four, what it says is that all turning movements under the scenario you see there on that image, on page four, all of those turning movements operate at a level of service D or better during the peak hours. So the biggest takeaway here that I want to leave with the committee is that from the TADI study in February 2021, and the updates asked for some of the intersection 
modification designs, all traffic conditions are improved. Next page is Appendix A. This is just the detail on ISBEL. So what I have in the markdown is the dual approach instead of the single throat. You can skip over that following page, so you're on page two at that point of the, yep, one more, one more seat. There we go. What I point out there is that this just shows, it compares the T, the image we've looked at, compared to the single approach. We can go through, but what they do is estimate traffic volumes, what type of new development would show up there. And it just gives you an idea of car trip generations. Skip to the next page. What it does is a peak hour capacity analysis. So you're on page three right now, one more. So what you'll see there on the bottom is highlighted in yellow peak hour. What I wanted to show off there is that the northbound circle in red, which is really the main approach that would be coming out of this split, level of service D is not an E or an F. It's not failing. Everything else is acceptable underneath that criteria. The southbound approaches, which is already there, is a D right now and maintains a, a D status. On the next page, page four, here again it says an asterisk there, all turning movements operate at level of service D or better. And I think it's important to point out near the bottom of that page where it says conclusions. Keep in mind that what we're proposing at Isbell essentially turns into traffic volume wise a glorified driveway. We're eliminating the through movements on the south frontage roads. You have very, very few cars exiting at that intersection. The analysis shows that the expected peak Q per the expected traffic queue per peak hour, say that fast three times, is only three to four vehicles per approach. By comparison, a Hinkle or sometimes eight, nine, ten plus that backup. By far fewer than what exists at Hinkle right now. Now if you flip over, you end up at Appendix B. This is dealing again with two and one together to look at Hinkle and Hobart together. If you wanted to push Hinkle through right away, could you do it in a way that would similarly create better traffic situations than what are there today? If you turn a second page, so you're at this page right here in your packet. Correct, yep. You have figure one, modified south frontage road. And I point out there in red, it analyzes an immediate Hinkle completion to West Mason. So if you flip over one more page, what you have is table one, revised build traffic peak hour operations. Everything in blue in that chart, those were movements before that were rated mostly F. The one was E that I have noted there. We've improved those to A, D, C, and B respectively. So the traffic conditions as modeled actually improve. Everything that I have circled in red is D or better. So those are new movements that are not there existing because you have a northbound approach. So what, you know, and again, I know I did this very high level and very quickly. I'm happy to go through and follow up with anything if anybody wants. But really to show that all the analyses done by the study show that the requested or the proposed alterations work, and in most cases better than the condition that is there right now. So kind of tying everything together, the existing is bad. I think the proposed is far better. It is not perfect. Like I said before, no one can claim it's perfect. In many cases, it is substandard to design. That's true. But it is better than the oper operation that's there. I feel the data proves this. Um, I would like to make this happen and work with the city to improve the commercial, add the residential, improve the access for everyone in that area, and quite frankly, improve the quality of life. Okay, Always answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Well, you might want to pause. Alder Steyer? Are you there? Well, okay, um, just check it. Yes, I am. Okay. I follow most of it very well. Um, I'm going to, does anybody else on the committee have something to say initially? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Um, you know, I realize that uh, you know, there might be a couple different things here. You know, we're looking at that other project further south on Hobart, but we're not going to really deal with that at this time, correct? Right. We're just looking at the Isbell. Right. Right. Well, I just looked at, you know, I just, just had a question that just, you know, I'm looking at the map, with one particular map, and it's like February 3, and bringing a cul-de-sac out. Is that, does anybody have questions about that? You know, just, just does that seem to, would that mitigate 
and everything over in that area. And having a heart attack and just leading into the businesses that are there. Yes, it is. We have not closed it. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I figured yeah. you'd have yeah. questions for you. Hello, yeah. Hey, Mark, that was just shown as a, a city minimum design standard requirement for a cul de sac ball. Does that mean that it needs to be there? And in my view, many different things I think are possible. So that was just kind of a placement to show the terminus of a right of way section per city design uh, standard. I'm, I'm looking at the two businesses that are there. I mean, there would be the cul de sac would. Or both of them, I, I would suspect. It's just I'm, I'm looking at a month, unless you're looking off the whole part. It's in the business of the, on the northwest corner there, a whole part in, in the front end road. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind. What, what access? Yeah. Right. Keep okay. in mind one you know, thing that's being worked on here. It was reflected in the analysis is that you have the redevelopment there, part of the traffic going out to Isbell. So you'd have a driveway off the cul-de-sac or something in place of the cul-de-sac there. You have all the traffic exiting out the Hobart Drive. Eventually, if Hobart connects to Mason as a right-in, right-out, as is proposed, you'd split that traffic flow right. between those two streets. All right. All right. That's good for now. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? And number one, I appreciate breaking that down page by page, detail for detail. It's very easy to understand. Okay, looking for a motion. Uh, well, is oh. there anyone else? I'm here sorry. To speak? Yeah. Oh, did you want to speak? I know. I'd we love to. to. No, we have to close it. I've given no. the opportunity. Okay, yeah, come on yeah. up. Sorry, I didn't really no, hear but that. Um, uh, Jason Campbell, 2475 West Mason. And so that address is actually really important. Um, I'm, I'm tenant, the restaurant. Oh, um, yes. So we had acquired that long standing <laughs> uh, local establishment. So some people know it as the, the former Blarney's, and some people know it as the former Buster's. We put a significant amount of time, energy, resources um, into redeveloping that property, operated it, and it, it met its demise as a restaurant for a multitude of reasons. But Ultimately, I'm here to speak as a landowner along that frontage road. I'm not speaking for them, but of them. So please, I want you to, I want you to hear that very clearly because I believe that my feelings are very similar to the others. Um, since the closure um, of our restaurant, trying to sell it above and beyond the COVID aspect, <laughs> try and sell the restaurant during COVID, but beyond the COVID aspect, the biggest concern of the big retail or, or restaurant tours that wanted to come in was access. Um, and it, even so, during the time where Packerland was open, and it has pretty much ceased any interest in the property at all once Packerland has shut down. Because the moment they start saying, well, how is my customer going to be getting here? They, they can figure it out immediately. Um, so I've got notes because I'm, I'm here really charged emotionally. This has been a really long haul trying to carry that property. And obviously my opinion is quite biased, but um, I, I, I'm, why I'm so charged is because I, I watched via uh, remotely last uh, meeting and I felt as though um, what I've heard from the city for improvements along that frontage road was just simply reiterated and, and how it hurt so much was the words were, uh, and there doesn't need to be a quote, sometimes it's not worth the squeeze. And so if I, among other landowners or property owners, business operators along that frontage road, pretty much feel abandoned. Um, when I still go to the property to maintain it, or if I were any of the other property owners going to open up their storefront that day, they're very much aware of the limited access to their property. And they're thinking in their mind, how is my customer going to get to me today? And so ultimately, uh, my, my feeling is that not much has happened to make that improvement, knowing all that, uh, working with county, knowing that the, the Packerland um, 
to the, the west of Packerland, the new intersection there, there's got to be better solutions to what isn't a solution at all. <laughs> so I, I really, I'm going to cut myself short simply because I'm, I'm getting more and more excited about it, but I just implore you to, to see that somebody has taken the initiative over a long term to help improve that frontage road, not necessarily just for traffic, but like to improve the properties there. I mean, we made a huge initiative to, to build that up, and we got the mayor's uh, beautification award for that year. So ultimately, we you know we were on that bandwagon of let's make that side of the street revitalized. And this is a gentleman who really wants to see a lot of that. Um, the, some of the sadder properties, you know, brought into a new version for that community. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, hold on a second, we might have questions. Yeah, yeah certainly. Yeah. Sir. Um, and you know what, I, I I apologize, I didn't ask name and address. I, I, did, I did say it. You so did say it, yeah, okay. I'm, all right. Jason Campbell, okay. yep, go ahead. Campbell. Yeah, no. There we go. We go way back. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Exactly, <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> Um, well, as a business guy, you know, I, I can really appreciate your sentiment here and, and, and I, I feel for you at the same time. And, you know, even if you're, you know, trying to sell the property, that I, I get it, I get it totally. And I didn't really look at the side of that other than, you know, trying to get in a new subdivision and get some usable property there too. Yeah. This is a big part of it, I think for me. Um, and I haven't, I'm an east sider, so I haven't been out to the new, so the west end of that road is shut off completely at the top of the hill. From Packerland. Pack yeah, I, the, there I mean, have that, been that different just, iterations as they've worked on it. You know, so it's been coned off for a significant amount yeah. of time. And then now it's, now they, to my knowledge, you can correct me if I'm wrong, they've since opened it up to just a simply right turn. So people can't come in that direction, but they can now get out. But that's... I mean, one of the biggest. So that please. It's right in, right out. Not yeah. from two of the four directions. North Northbound Packer Lane can make a right in, and you can exit right out. If you're coming off from West Mason, you can't yeah. turn left and left. Well, when they redid 41, I had a business right there. Not only did it take four years, and it pretty much shut me down. I couldn't even get to my own business. There is no. I'm in, I was in exactly the same position yeah. you were, and it, I, I had to ride out my lease and get that yeah. H out of there. Yeah. And uh, I can feel for you on that. Yeah. Um, that's very important for that development there. Do you have any questions for me? Just, are you doing okay? Hanging on right now? <laughs> I'm here. There, there's my it's question. Closed. I'm kicking. Okay. Yeah. I know. Any other questions? Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, we need a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion by Alder Weary to close the floor. Second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, and then pass. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm, there's a delay, Alder Stoyer, so I apologize if I'm okay. jumping ahead of hearing you. Um, so you're okay with I, it? I think we're back. I think we're back on track. Okay, all right, so that passes. Uh, so we're, I mean, that approved to close the floor. Um, so I'm looking for a motion on Before that, the I, item. Oh, you want to speak? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, items one and two are not part of the consideration. Only item number three with the Isbell extension. So let, just Wait a minute. Where are you? Why are you well, when, when Mr. Oh, Baker uh, provided his synopsis, he was yeah. talking about items one and two. That's background information, but it... Item three is a standalone item. That's what's on the agenda. Right, yeah. Um, item number three cannot be considered until somebody has agreements in hand allowing for the cross access for these two parcels. Otherwise, what you'll do by extending this down and approving this cul de sac, you will be cutting off access to that property that's on the corner of Hobart. And that would be a direct violation of the zoning ordinance. I have representatives from community and economic development here that will back me up on that. There is a vertical differential of approximately three feet, less than 10 feet between the back of curb on Mason Street and that frontage road at Isbell. You cannot have a 30% slope there. 
that won't work. So we still have to resolve how we're going to get rid of that vertical differential if you're proposing to do this. Having the signal pick up two different directions is exceedingly difficult. And the last thing we have to talk about is if this were to go through, the funding for it. Historically, these type of developer requested improvements are 100% funded by the developer. So if you decide to proceed with something like this, you are going to have to assign where the funding comes from. Okay. Um, as part of the motion, they would have to do tonight, the funding? If, you, if you're deciding to approve it, yep. Go ahead, Alter. No, sorry. I'm getting the vibe you're not real f fond of this plan. Well, we, we already well, I've never, I've, I've never shied away from that. I know. I think it improves a bad situation. I mean, we can all admit it's a bad situation there. I think it's a bold move. I think we move forward with it and we, we figure out how to do it later. I think we approach the county and say, hey, what you're doing up there is negligent, you know, hurting what we're doing down here. Maybe they can kick some funds into it. But I think we move ahead with it. You know, we'll find our funding. But uh, and, uh, there's lots of steps. This is the first step. So, well, there's a will, there's a way. I think last week you did say it can be done, it's just whether we want to do it, so. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it is the monetary aspect of it. The floor is not open, but uh, I mean, I guess we can talk about it later. We can no, open, we open the floor if somebody wants to talk to you. I mean, as a response to the financial aspect of it. I can speak to other people on. Okay. Motion. 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 Second. Motion um, open the floor by Elder Weary, second by Elder Campbell. Everybody in favor uh, say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. I don't hear Mark either way. Um, or so, or Elder Story. Okay, so then pass it. Go ahead if you want to approach the, the again. The discussions have been ongoing for a long time in terms of, as the director points out, how do you fund this? No one is under any illusion, myself included, that. Any sort of bonding or, or, or TID um, defined bond group would 100% pay for that. We've talked about it's probably a combination of assessments, developer contribution, and TID increment generated. So we've been working for a long time on this. Is how do you define a TID? Let's analyze the new development that's going to occur, the projected revenue. I provide staff my estimates on that. So I'll, I'll let staff speak more to that. But yes, that is well known that to do anything like this will require the funding. How we get it from all pockets is under. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Sure. Uh, uh, Alder Weary first, and then Alder Story. Of Gear, right. Of Mr. Bader. Oh, okay. Is, he Is it a question of Mr. Bader? Alder Story? Uh, yeah, are you. Are you yes. Do you have a question for Mr. Bader? Okay, yes, yeah, I do. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Jared, uh, Director Grenier did bring up a point about the funding for this, and I know you're talking about some various kids or other other avenues to help finance a project like this. Um, are you, you said you've studied this for some time, so you, you, you feel you have a fairly good handle on how to go forward uh, in financing something like this, uh, given the fact that you're looking at maybe two or other other avenues, he did just talk about that. Are you maybe you're getting a bad connection? Um, okay, real quickly, I'm just wondering if uh, Mr. Bear is uh, satisfied with. You know the fact that moving forward with this project, that there might be some financial methods methodology to move forward with, with this project. So, TID or other other factors. Um, is he con are you confident uh, that you can move forward with something like this with what is in place and possibly what may come in come in place for you? Yeah, Mark, what I, what I mentioned just a moment ago is that... Hold on, it, pause it, for a second. Can you hear Mr. Bader speaking? Yes, I can. Okay, okay, just want to make sure. Great. So, yeah, Mark, it'll be a combination of different funding sources. So, as I've been discussing with 
planning and economic development staff is the creation of a TID that would um, simply generate the increment to pay for a good chunk of it. We've talked about estimates of what would be generated and when to fund which infrastructure is installed at which time, knowing it may not all be right away. It's likely then uh, additionally some degree of assessments, developer contribution, and then don't forget with some of these parcels as they are redeveloped, it's very plausible that sections of, for instance, an old section of Front Road are, are removed and replaced with the new development as approved at that time as part of that development budget. And again, I'll okay, we're here. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just to ask, were you satisfied? I believe it was Mr. Osborne, was that his name? Uh, I couldn't quite get the name of the other person who testified. I think it was um, Campbell. You know, he, he had a business. <laughs> I was Campbell. wondering if you felt like there were other, develop, other uh, owners along that stretch who feel the same way, or if you talked to the other folks along that stretch of road that feel the same way, that yeah. they need something to happen there. Yes, I have. Admittedly, not all, but most, especially those between Isbell and Hobart Drive, many are ready to sell or are thinking about facilities anyway, or at least we've talked about the discussion of access and how that would work when roadway realignment would occur. Okay. All right, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so we, um, anybody, any other questions before we close the floor? I just want to um, comment with regards to the TID. We've been looking at the TID and we agree that the TID could be a portion of this, but I, I don't know if we come into a good chunk. Okay. I just want to go on the record a that, chunk. right? <laughs> um, you know, certainly we were looking at that housing development, but we're not, I don't think we're far enough along with the boundaries and the numbers yet. Correct. Yeah, we've been working uh, with Mr. Reader for years now on this whole project. It's really, and he did mention at the beginning, to get that Boucher property, which is south of the Hinkle intersection, developed in some housing, um, also some redevelopment of commercial sites. Um, but we have not finalized the power of the TID, a mix of the uses. We don't know the cost of the improvements associated, so we don't know how much increment, first we don't know how much increment, increment's gonna be created, and then how much of that increment, what percentage of the improvement cost that's going to be. Those are all unknowns for us right now. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that you know the TID out there is going to have a positive increment, but to what degree I don't know, and I don't know the costs <laughs> to the improvement. So you know it's hard to say how what what amount that would work. Mm -hmm. And then I guess just to comment on what uh, Director Bernier had said earlier, any lots um, have to have frontage, but not just frontage; they have to have access. So if it's a lot like a mason that has an access restriction, um, there would have to be some type of a, uh, perpetual easement or something to get out of that lot if we were to vacate their street access. Just because I heard that before. So. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, any other questions? So we need to close the floor. floor. Question Second. made by Alder Reedy, close the floor. Second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And so the floor is now closed. And anybody have any other questions? I do have a question. Either Steve or Cheryl or Dave or Mr. Buck. Um, if we approved the request and had the planning and economic development staff work with the applicant on the funding mechanisms, is that something that, you know, it wouldn't go any farther until the funding mechanisms, but we would approve the concept and say, okay, now work on the funding. Yeah, that's, I think that's what that's what we do and what we have been doing. Um, and we've had different iterations where we've come up with numbers, but nothing's been finalized. And it's been kind of a moving target over, you know, we've got weapons, we've got all kinds of issues. Um, and I don't know, you'd have to ask the uh, director if you can approve it conditionally on the funding that is being established. Um, but if you could do that, that would probably be a good idea. <laughs> is it? Well, I, I think you would have to establish what your target funding would be. That I mean, don't we have a lot of streets that are on maps, but they're not put in? I mean, that this would, would be, just be saying, be hey, we want to do this project. We endorse it. The council, the city thinks it's important. Let's do it. And then we'll work out how to do it. We keep banding it back and forth. But why we can't do it? Well, I think we should do it. I think 
a lot of people think we should do it. So to do so, uh, to approve the extension pending, but it, it's what 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 is it pending? Pending the creation of a TID that would pay for it. The funding mechanisms. We'll let these departments and the developer work on how it's going to be funded. But it at least says, hey, we want to do this. Otherwise, it's going to get kicked to the curb and it'll go through the grinder again like it has, and we'll talk about it five years. <laughs> the only thing I'm concerned with is if you don't identify what a suitable funding mechanism is. That's what, that's what the brilliant Dave and Cheryl and Mr. Bader are going to work on. <laughs> Would you be willing to exclude certain funding sources? Like what are you that it wouldn't for? be part of our capital borrowing. It wouldn't no. tap into that reserve, that it would have to be funded by something other than the city's well, I capital. I think they're all on the table. I mean, it's the city road and it's being made worse by a county project and we want to approach the county. And maybe we'll help step up for a small portion of it. I, I see where you're coming from. Right? I, I just, I need to know where the yeah. funding's coming from, yeah. otherwise yeah, I can't Yeah, I didn't want to exclude it, though. Yeah, I think we everybody should have some skin. I don't want to abandon our businesses that have been sitting there waiting and it's getting worse and worse for them. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Buck has a I was just, just going to make kind of statement. We have roads mapped on the official map, and uh, I think one example would be Hinkle, which was mm -hmm. a month or so ago. We have that officially mapped down through, but that's not a, I don't think that's the same as officially extending, where that's more of a, you're going to do this thing. Um, the map is, first step in that official map. But if you put it on the map, could you say, you know, we're not, we want it there, but we're not going to put it in until we figure out how to pay for it, right? Yeah, that, that would actually be through planning, uh, be a map through plan commission to do a, a official map amendment or an OMA. So are we at the wrong place? Or <laughs> I mean, I'm if just, if I that's all you want to do is reserve that corridor and say that there's an intent to move forward with this, that would be OMA through planning commission. If you're actually ordering the improvement done, that's what we're talking about tonight. I think that's going to put in the Did grinder. Did you comment on that? If I could open the floor, make a motion to open the floor? Sure. Oh, okay, motion to open the floor by Elder Weary. Second. Second. Second by Elder Campbell. And for all, the, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> I hear you. Okay. <laughs> so the floor is now open. And it's been approved. <laughs> right. I, I think to what uh, Alder Weary's point was before, you, action obviously is preferred to say let's do it and figure out the way to get it done through the funding through discussion. I guess when we did Hinkle, I think the question we had was when you go through existing right away, do you really need a map then to do that? Whether or not that's true, maybe that's a con an action that needs to happen concurrently with this. But again, the action in front of you tonight is to say, let's actually say we're going to put it in, not just put it on the map. Fair enough. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Payne? Can I make a comment? Uh, if you give us your name and your yeah, address. Yeah, David Bartikovsky, 900 Cedar Street. Green Bay, this wonderful city of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Right, boy. <laughs> 54301. Thank you. You know, um, I, I, it's great ideas to open up things, develop streets and such, but if you're driven through our streets, period, I mean, that's where we should be putting money. That's just my opinion, is, is the improvements of our roads here uh, throughout the whole city of Green Bay, because it's crumbling, it's, it's decaying. Uh, your vehicles going over that, Broadway section when you hit the new bounty uh, that railroad intersection right there it's horrible for everyone. and nobody seems to be addressing those issues to help bring business in those improvements are important um, it's just a comment I needed to make okay you may have any questions you, so you don't for think example? that mr. Bader's request well, I, I is, an, is it an improvement? It is an improvement, okay. but there's so. It, but, but it is to make our city keep thriving. I understand, but there's uh, all I'm all I'm. I get it, but it's a, no, no, really no, I, I think what he's saying makes project. perfect sense. Yeah. I agree with yeah. Mr. Bader, 
on you gotta that stick area to, over there. You gotta stick to the project. And and being a, and being a business owner myself yeah. and having you know, buildings in the Green Bay area, I think it's important to do that. Have access to your business. I really do. I agree with that. But I'm also saying that things should be looked at throughout the city of Green Bay to improve our roads. Period. That's all I. That's why I didn't mention that. That's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, Jason. So, so the emotions get really, you know, flared up again because simply putting something on a map is tabling it, just like Hinkle decades ago, right? Just because it's there doesn't mean it will ever happen. Um, it, there needs to be action, and uh, <laughs> it, we could twiddle our thumbs and say let's do something all day, but until somebody says I, it won't. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody have any questions for them? Okay. Anything else before we close the floor? Okay. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor by Elder Weary, seconded by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that, <laughs> that is passed. The floor is now closed. All right. So, moving back to the item here. Anybody um, have a clarify your motion? Uh, I don't think there's one. Is there? But uh, uh, let's let's be the impetus then, I guess. Um, motion to approve the request and have the planning and economic development departments work with the applicant on funding mechanisms. Second. And let that go where it goes. When? What's that? When, when would it be installed? After the funding oh. mechanisms are identified. Okay. Yeah. So there, there's not necessarily a, a promise that it'd be part of the 24 program? Or no, or? I mean, it could be, but. I mean, it's going to depend on how fast these other wheels go, but at least it says the wheels are moving. I mean, the wheels might move really quick, or they might grind a little bit and then go over some rough ground. But so at we least have it puts our okay behind it. So we have a motion by Alder Weary. I'm looking for a second. Second. Second so. by Alder Campbell. Oh, sorry. Questions. Um, and so all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Those opposed? Okay, that passes. We got a lot of smart people in this room. We can figure it out. All right. We'll do Mark's not in the room, though, so that's why you got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wow. All right, so we're going to move on to number seven, consideration. And thank you. It will go to full council um, next Tuesday, right? Thank you all. All right, thank you. Appreciate your time, please. Okay, so number seven, consideration with possible action on acceptance of the 2023 downtown parking study completed by Desmond Parking Consultants held over from the January, or I'm sorry, July 26th, 2023 Improvement and Services meeting. Um, and I know there is somebody to speak on this, but I did get contacted today um, asking that it be held on because the downtown um, districts have not been shown the parking study and also wondering if the um, community and economic development department has seen it. We have seen it provided comments to the part of the works. Okay. All right. But the, the downtown districts, that was specifically who I got contacted by, not uh, one of them, and asked if we could hold it until they got to see it because they have not been shown it. So that, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Um, remind me, is there a timeline on this one? I don't, I don't know if there was, right? I mean, if it, there, there's no criticality okay. in the timeline. Mm -hmm. And just in answer to Alder X comment, typically we don't release it to the public until after council's had a chance to have it. So that the fact that the BIDs haven't seen it, they have the same availability to it by accessing the packet that everybody else does, but we wouldn't formally <coughs> reach out to the BIDs to share the study with them mm -hmm. until after we've shared it with you. Yeah, and so along that same line, I was yeah. contacted by a, a local developer who asked the same thing before the, it was brought up at the last meeting. And I said, I can't officially share it with you, but look at the info packet because it's it was included in there for okay. public review. Yeah. Okay. And he was fine with that. He went, went there. 
got his copy. Okay, and that one of the, one of the concerns was the that that you all had seen it. So, um, but the other part was business district. So that was just what I was asked. Um, and there's somebody here to speak. So anyway. Motion on the floor. Second. So motion on mm -hmm. the floor by Alder Mary, seconded by Alder Campbell. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. And the floor. Aye. Uh, David Bartakowski, 900 Cedar Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. Um, thank you all for allowing me to speak uh, regarding this issue uh, that I brought up, I think before July, uh, uh, I gave a communication to Mr. Alderman uh, Stoyer, and my communication consisted of uh, allowing veterans past and present to park without paying in the city of Green Bay downtown area. And the other thing was to allow service workers making $15 or less to park for free uh, in the uh, city of Green Bay as well. Um, and uh, I was told at that first meeting that I was going to be contacted by the company that they consulted with to do the parking study. And I never was to be a part of that. And uh, yeah, I was gone, well, I was gone for two months uh, in Spain, walking the Camino, uh, but I still could have been called or I could have communicated with them as well. Uh, but I was never, uh, I was never called or, or asked my uh, opinion on this study. I just want you to know that before you go into this study and, and really look at it. So I want to bring this up again that I would like to see as part of this parking study to allow veterans past and present to park free in the downtown area and service workers that make less than $15 to park free in the parking structures. I know for a fact our parking structures are at times empty. Not many people parking in those structures. And I know there was a, uh, a, uh, a consideration a while ago that they were gonna put apartments on some of these parking structures here. So uh, I, think, uh, uh, I think by allowing service workers to park for free, you know, when you're making $15 or less, most these service workers are making seven dollars or less, and you have to pay ninety dollars a month to park. Eats into your budget, especially today's uh, economy. Things are really tough out there. It's really hard. Plus, people don't want to work anymore. If you have to pay to actually work in the downtown area, kind of kind of makes it more difficult for the people that own these businesses to staff them. And that's why I came up with this uh, originally. This idea. And I was hoping it would be considered. And, uh, and adopted uh, in the city of Green Bay. And so, uh, uh, and Mark, uh, Mr. Stoyer, my, yeah. uh, my condolences to you for yesterday's game. Oh, I, I thought it was sleeper girl. Yes, thank so, you. Sorry about your brewers. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm a Dodger, Dodger, uh, Dodger. I have, head, so. I have a question. Yes, if I could. Go ahead, Elder Sir. Okay, thank you, Alder. Uh, David, um, I know that this is a passion of yours, um, and I, I think I'm going to wait till I'm going to just ask you a question. But uh, you know, there may be other vehicles uh, to look at this situation, um, and I just want you know this this is an overall study, and I'm just thinking that I'm going to wait. You know, wait for staff and that to talk on this as well. But I'm just wondering if if you feel like that could be handled, not so much just with a, a parking study, but you know, with with some kind of a change uh, in the system of some sort besides the study. Oh, absolutely. I just wanted to be uh, consulted, which I never was, because uh, there's a million okay. ways. Uh, there's a million ideas you can come up with to get to that that objective that you're looking at and and i'm open to all of that i i just think as a business owner it's tough today to hire help especially in the inner city here when you have to pay for parking it's a right. it's a very tough and I, and I know and i understand where you're coming from on this and i, and I know that uh there is a challenge to hire and have people retain people so to speak um you know in some respect, the economy is turning around a bit, um, but I understand where you're coming from. And I, I'm just wondering if you feel that if this, you're looking at veterans and you're also looking at people making $15 an hour or less, you know, will, will this open up the door for other 
folks that might feel like they need help as well? Or do you think this, in your estimation, does this cover pretty much everybody that you think would need it? Well, I, I, uh, I can't answer that. I don't know. I think that really needs to be looked at and, and discussed right. because I don't know what are the, you know, what other alternatives there are, what other people need help in the area. Right. I'm just talking about the, the people that do have to, are subject to have to pay for this to work down here. We might all have hardships where we can't pay for parking to come down. Yep. I mean, I just got a ticket the other day because I was three minutes late in a 15 minute parking. And I paid it. I understand, you know, I abide by the laws and rules. I'm not looking, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to ramble on here. I just want to stay focused on the, on the issue. And that's all I, you know, I, the communication was put in. It was brought forth here. It was discussed. Uh, I, w I was told by Director, uh, I'm sorry. Rainier. Rainier, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, by Director Rainier that I was going to be called or consulted and we were going to discuss this issue. And I never was, and that's why I'm here tonight. We, uh, uh, before something is adopted, I don't know if it's going to be adopted, your, your parking study, I just was, uh, nothing was placed in there regarding what I had brought up or discussed. Okay. And that's right. why I'm here this evening. I'm not sure it's the, the, the remedy to all, but I think it would, I, I think it would solve, it would invite veterans, first of all, honoring veterans, it would invite them into the city to come in park for free, spend their money in town here, generate income for the businesses, and also uh, help the uh, businesses downtown here with their service workers and retaining them. I, it, just, it makes sense to me. It, it, this goes way back. My, my first business was on Adam Street when I first opened up, and people used to have to pay in the parking lot across from me when the mall was there to go pay money to go and spend money, their money, and it never made sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. That's why there's malls where you park and you walk into a mall and you don't have to pay to park. But the businesses down here, uh, it's tough for business down here when somebody has to pay for party number one or is over their two hour time limit and gets a ticket. And it leaves a really bad, bad uh, uh, feeling that, you know what, I'm not coming downtown. I'm not going to come down now because I'm going to get a ticket. And yeah, they, they can be looked at. I mean, I'm not saying this. Is, I, I'm not saying I have the answer, but let's let's think about other alternatives to help the businesses in the downtown area here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Second. Okay, motion to close the floor made by Elder Weary, seconded by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and the floor aye. is now closed. Thank you. All right, any other um, comments? Alder, I, yes, Elder Stoyer, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Well, I had a chance to kind of look over the report a bit, uh, and I realized that we're still in the process of, you know, it's a draft. We're moving forward with it. Uh, I'd like to ask staff, was, maybe I missed it, but was there, uh, was Mr. Bartikowski's ask, so to speak, was any of that brought into consideration with, with this, uh, with the consultant, and um, is there, is there a possibility that some changes could be made to this report, or is it cast in stone, so to speak? Well, this report isn't necessarily at that micro level. Let me start off with that. What we're right. looking at with this report is more of system changes. Mr. Bartakowski's request definitely can be considered, and I don't think we need Desmond to do that. That's something that staff can do in-house, and if we need to consult with Desmond on some technical aspects, we definitely can do that. Um, so I think the two items are somewhat <laughs> exclusive of each other. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very unfortunate that Mr. Bartikowski wasn't part of the, 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 the focus group, but we did sit down and, and meet with, uh, with some interested stakeholders when we developed the list of people um, that were interviewed and, and were part of the study. 
So it was not necessarily done in a vacuum, not at all. Um, matter of fact, there were well over 30 individuals that were consulted as part of this study. Um, so we can definitely, and interesting idea, <coughs> there's a lot more detail that I need to sit down and, and have a lengthy, more lengthy conversation with Bartico Mr. Bartikovsky because, uh, you know, things like all veterans, so not only veterans here that live in Green Bay, but veterans that are traveling to Green Bay from other cities, other, other states, how do, we, how do we know that that's a veteran parking, you know, some things like that that we need to identify. Um, service workers, is it only service workers that are working within the downtown area and do we define that downtown area? So what happens if the downtown area is the core of downtown, okay? This study area was essentially Monroe Avenue to Ashland Avenue and Dowsman-ish, maybe a little north, down to almost-ish Mason Street, but more so right. Walnut Channel, right? Okay, so let, let's say that's the boundaries. Um, Mr. Bartikowski's business is outside of that boundary. So we need to determine where is that boundary? How do we determine where those folks are? How many there are? Because ultimately, much as we don't want it to be, this comes down to a question of economics, okay? Part of I think one thing is that, you know, the downtown areas is meters, et cetera. You know, I think some of the outside areas, even from outside of the downtown area, you know, have two hour parking or they'll have a parking lot, that type of thing. There's a little more access, I think. But, um, you know, I, my gut feeling is that, you know, I'm sad that he was not involved in, in the discussion. But with that being said, I still feel like you know, this report to go through eventually, you know, depending how we look at it. And with that in mind, you know, like I said, if there is a change in, you know, Mr. Bartkowski, there might be some other whole set of other, other changes too. We can bring that through committee uh, separate of the report. Is that your feeling as well? Yes, and where I was going is the report that Desmond was commissioned to complete is complete. Desmond's not going right. to change their report. They provided us with their analysis of parking issues in the downtown, and they provided us with their recommendations. You're not necessarily okay. approving the report itself. Okay. You're so, receiving so. and placing on file the report, oh, and then you're making right. you're taking action on the recommendations of the report. So. I, j I just want to be clear, when we're talking about the report, Desmond's not going to go back and redo anything. They did what no, they did. No, I don't think. Now, if there, are, think one of the, if there are things above and beyond the recommendations that Desmond came up with, and that's what Mr. Bartikovsky has, is something above and beyond the recommendations of Desmond, because Desmond was looking at this from 10,000 feet, okay? Um, mm -hmm. What Mr. Bartikovsky's talking about is potentially a policy change that we within DPW would have, and then we need to study right. both the implementation on that and what the financial aspects were, because again, that's where I was headed with my comment. Parking right. is a special revenue fund. It is yeah. not taxpayer supported, not, so no property tax goes toward parking division. We are 100% right. self-supported. So if we're gonna provide programs that provide economic relief to somebody, we need to be able to make that up somewhere else. So that's the give and take that we need to study as part of a request, any request that would come in, but definitely right. one like Mr. Barkovsky. No, I'm not saying not I'm not saying not to study it. Quite the opposite. No. I am definitely interested in sitting down with Mr. Bartikovsky. This is an interesting proposal, something we haven't looked at. So yeah, we're happy to look at it, but I think it's kind of exclusive of the Desmond uh, issue. Okay, uh, yeah. Alder Stoyer, you, you have any other questions? Um, like, I guess mean, just one quick other point. I, you know, with this report being brought forward, you know, with the draft format and, you know, the councils have voted on it, um, was it, was it to the point that the public and that was, was not aware of this until it's passed by council? It, it is an attachment. At, um, as Mr. Pierlot said, that it's an attachment so they can see it now because it's an attachment to our 
um, agenda. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Just as long as you know, it's just not exclusive to council. Um, you know, I, I would like the fact that the public can look at it as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Elder Weary. No, uh, thanks. I guess I was kind of misreading it myself as well because it's really just a report. It's just, hey, do a report, here's a report. Thank you for the report. The report itself. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> what we're doing. Receive and place a file, you said. Well, so. that's the report. Now, typically what we've done in the past is we've accepted the report. We're not necessarily approving the report because the report is what the report yeah. is, right? Okay. Um, but then we've taken an action with the implementation steps, the recommendations. But and we'd be doing? looking for something similar here. But again, the timeliness aspect is not necessarily there. We have no problem if, if the committee wants us, and if there's more than just the BIDs. Now, granted, it, the target really is downtown, okay? So I would like to think that the two BIDs are gonna have a finger on the pulse of most people who are going to be impacted by this. But if there are others you want us to share it with, let us know who those people are. Okay. But to have this sit for two weeks or have it sit for four weeks, I don't know that that's I don't know that that's a make or break for us. Okay. So we're not necessarily just to make it clear, we're vote we vote on uh, or it would be a receive a place of file, but not voting on approving in implementing. What's well, right. suggested. If I could add something, yeah, yes. exactly what. Uh, Will that be the wording in council? Director Greer right. mentioned. Mr. Pierlet. We've always done this, you know, take the reports. I've been involved in five or six of them over my years as parking manager, uh, dating back to 1991. Uh, you know, like for example, uh, remove on street time limits and implement estimated on street rates. That, that's a recommendation from Desmond. That doesn't mean we have to do it so that we would have. have with this report received for official city consumption, if you will, mm -hmm. then parking division goes through one by one and decides, or you know, build a ramp up in the Broadway area. That's up to the city to decide on any of these. But we, you know, we could come back in two months and say, with a re request like we did with the last report ten years ago, we're requesting that we remove on street time limits and implement escalating on street rates. You're going to see that at this very menu. So, so I, I do think a potential would be if, if the committee wished to receive place on file the report tonight, but as a condition of that, and direct staff to prepare a implementation plan for the 21 recommendations that were provided by the consultant just wondering because I was asked about the business districts if we should just put on hold it and for that reason I know we're receiving place and but would it uh, you know because they're requesting that so they have more time to look at it I guess to give their feedback well and again once once we have once we accepted the report the report it's not, yes. not changing Desmond you're just you're done your work is, is complete that's yeah. what we'd be saying okay then to develop to solicit feedback from the community and develop a, recommend a list of recommendations, that would be part of the motion. Mm -hmm. And we would bring that list of recommendations back to committee for implementation when it's ready. All we're doing with the second document that we provided you, uh, Operations Manager Pierlot simply took and made a, an executive summary is, these are the recommendations. Here, here's all the work Desmond did in this report and to boil that down, here's their recommendations. Mm -hmm. Now so whether we agree with Chris <laughs> whether uh, we agree with those recommendations or not is hasn't yet been decided. I'll make his motion. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say from a from a community development standpoint, these are very, very similar to our planning documents. A lot of recommendations in there that we don't do or they get augmented at the Commission Council, wherever. Um, and as we mentioned before, you asked if we had seen it, we have. We gave a bunch of comments. That doesn't change the report, but mm -hmm. when Chris and Steve go to do their implementation, they would come back to all the departments and say, hey, you had this comment on this item, whatever it would be, let's say a ramp location. Mm -hmm. um, and then all that would come back to 
council, I suppose, or whatever committee they go to, and that's when the real discussion gets, because that's when you're really getting into it. So I just wanted to make that, because it's very, it's very similar to our planning documents. Um, a lot of times there's stuff that doesn't get done in there, or gets changed. That makes okay. sense. I mean, we're, we're accepting the report and we're asking Receive staff, as Steve said, well, we're accepting it. We're saying, all right, staff, go out and solicit feedback and use this recommendation, work with all stakeholders, bring us back. Don't do what I do. Okay. Anybody have any other questions or comments? I'll make a motion on the floor. Um, oh, to open, I was like, what? he said open the floor. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, Alderberry, oh, I'm uh, sorry, sir, oh. just hold on a second. Um, Alderberry and it. Made a motion to open the floor. Second by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. <laughs> floor is now I open. just want to say, uh, to me, the report is incomplete. And the reason I say it's incomplete is because my request is not in there or studied. Mr. Bargolowski, yep. uh, yep. the Bart report is, uh, Bar I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, the report you call me is David. That's not David. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what they're saying is the report is done by them. It's not going to change. We're just accepting, repeat, receiving in place and file. We're not implementing it. Well, I know. I know that. I understood that, but I just want to go on record. Go back. Okay. I know. I just okay. want to go on record here yes. that I believe it's incomplete okay. because my my uh, recommendations were were not put in there and studied is what I'm saying. I, so that's all I'm you. saying. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Perhaps as part of the implementation, there could be discussions between yourself and staff to see if, yeah. see if some of those could be worked in as other ideas. I, I think that's that. where we could yeah. put it in. I'm pretty flexible, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Anybody have any other questions for him? Okay. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Weary. A second. Second by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, the floor aye. is now closed. Okay, so. We're looking for um, a motion. Well, what I what I heard oh. was a motion from Alder Weary to accept the down, 2023 downtown parking study completed by Desmond Parking Consultants and direct staff to solicit comments from stakeholders and prepare a list of recommendations for implementation. Does that sound like your That's motion? Exactly. Yeah. Which we <laughs> just need you to repeat. Okay. So we have a motion by Elder Weary and second. Oh, second by Elder. Give it. Okay, Elder Stoyer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, read your Cliff and Chris that, notes. Yeah, read your Chris notes, and um, that passes. All right. So we are now going back to E one. Yes. Correct. Correct. All right. E1, consideration with possible action on request by C.H. Robinson to enter into a rental agreement for 60 stalls. What? Oh, in River Ramp. I thought it was saying something wrong. In association with their space in the FEWI building. Fox County. Fox County building. The old Youngers building. Okay. I call that Prangies, but okay. Prangies at Dave's. Prangies. So the river ramp is owned by Foxconn uh, as Peewee um, and operated under an agreement by Parking Division. Foxconn pays a nominal ramp operating fee to the Parking Division and Parking Division is authorized by Foxconn to retain all renting revenue to help offset our operating costs. I will tell you, we don't come anywhere close to covering our costs. That, that ramp is a loser. How, how is it affected now that Foxconn is up for sale? Uh, yet to be determined. Okay. But um, C.H. Robinson is one of the companies there. Um, there are some stalls which are reserved, some stalls which are rented on a monthly basis, and some stalls that are metered in there. And <clears throat> historically, Foxconn or Fiwi, whoever the builder owner is, gets to determine whether or not somebody is allowed to go into a rental situation or whether those remain at large like meters. They have deferred and give us, given us that opportunity to manage whether or not rentals could be in there. Um, and one of the tenants, C.H. Robinson, has requested some additional rental spots, reserved spots. In Speaking as as a team, 
DPW feels that the most efficient use of that ramp would be to have it all under contract rental and not have meters in there. It's, you will see in the parking study, one of the main criticisms of that ramp is it's poorly signed and nobody knows it's there. 100% agree. We, we as a parking division, we also don't want to call a lot of attention to it because the design of that ramp's not real good. That was a privately developed ramp that we wound up having an interest in as a result of the original buyout from veteran Dank 10 years ago. Um, <clears throat> Ideally, it would be operated by tenant, or it would be occupied only by tenants. <clears throat> Once vehicles enter that ramp, it's very tight, you can't turn around, parking stalls are small, the turnaround areas are, 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 it's just not a real good ramp for the general public to go in and try to find a spot in. It's not very large, there's only 116 stalls or something like that in there. Um, so. Getting a tenant, especially a tenant of the building who wants to occupy a large number of stalls is a good thing for the city. It's a good thing for Phoebe. So staff is recommending approval of this. Foxconn and, uh, and C.H. Robinson met at a parking division was included in, a, in an after meeting directly with Foxconn. But as part of their renewal of their lease agreement, Foxconn said, yeah, you, you couldn't rent that many stalls. So they told us, Foxconn told us, and it's a standard boilerplate agreement, uh, going rates, nothing, nothing special, nothing discount. Mm -hmm. C.H. Robinson starts their new lease on September 1st, and they're excited to still be there. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Motion to approve. Oh, oh we have a motion to approve by Alder Weary. Second. Second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and that um, passes. Um, so we're going to go to um, number two, consideration with possible action on request by HCW LLC and Bay Lake Food Court Real Estate LLC to enter into a rental agreement for 50 stalls in River Ramp in association with condominium development in the Bay Lake City Center building. Before we move forward, um, We um, went into closed session in regards to this development during city council, and so I was asked to hold due to our directive during closed session and not move forward with this until after that. So the only thing I'd like to say uh, about it is uh, there was a Scribner's error. <laughs> I'm glad oh, we got that. And I, I okay. asked our, our clerical staff to change it, and uh, uh, something happened. It is not in the river ramp. It's in the, they're asking to rent in the Cherry Street ramp. So, so we we'll, we'll amend, correct that. We would amend the Cherry, for that. Okay. Cherry Street ramp. Okay. So when it gets republished uh, at the next council or next INS, it will show us Cherry. Now See, it's Robinson because it's river ramp. ramp. We don't have to. Have no, we just Cherry want ramp. we we want to okay. make sure that it's on the recording and that everybody knows. Okay, it that is a cherry it, when it comes ramp. back, it's going to say cherry. Nobody's because <laughs> if you actually look at the document we've included in your packet, <laughs> yeah. it very clearly indicates yeah. it's for the cherry. You catch that? Yeah. Okay. Motion to hold. Okay, we have a motion second. to hold by Alder Weary and seconded by Alder Campbell. So, all in favor, say aye. 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 We still have you, Mark? Yes, I. Okay. I. And that passes. All right, so we're going to go to number three, which I was alluding to earlier. Um, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Grant to require staff to send a letter to residents who have will have financial contribution to projects included in the city's capital improvement program. And this was held over from our last. Um, July 26, 2023, Improvement and Services meeting. Um, Alder, or, um, I'm sorry, Director Grenier, do you have anything to add before I? I, I have not see. had any conversation with Alder Grant in this regard, so I'm not okay. sure exactly what the scope of this is. I will tell you that if it's for all projects that are in our capital improvement program, that causes me some concern. Okay, so. Um, I talked to her on my way here, and then I think she texted me too, so I would have a better. Um, basically, it was kind of like what we were talking about earlier, and that's why I thought it was a perfect example. Um, but 
just to give a specific for Alder Grant in her district, there was somebody that um, basically they never received a letter saying that they had to that they that there was going to be a sidewalk put in, and they were sent a notification, you know, with a bill saying how much it was going to be, and okay. so. The request is is that people in this case, and I know you, um, I think she, she had mentioned that she didn't come up with the word city capital improvement program. I think maybe that's how you described it, but um, specifically sidewalks is what she's referring to. Well, and that, that's, is this only for new sidewalks? Because our sidewalk program, people don't necessarily find out that they're responsible for sidewalk until they get the letter after the resolution and I think this year we had over 600 people that received notice saying you need to repair your sidewalk are you asking us to send all those folks letters before the resolution goes out it sounds like it's new but I could be wrong yeah I think it's new sidewalks um, I'm just gonna read she said uh, residents deserve to know if they're possibly going to be responsible to pay for something and voice their opinion um, she wasn't told about it because it was, you know, it was approved prior to her being in office. So basically, um, she just found out from the residents that they had gotten this this bill. So they were upset when they received a bill, and that was the first they had heard about it. Um, so yes, new sidewalks going in. I mean, there's a difference than a, like a chip in the sidewalk or a crack or whatever, something like that, but the new sidewalk's going in. How many would that apply to? Sorry. You <laughs> no, that's... Uh, How many? Oh, the right. Well, it's, it's fairly infrequent that we would have a project like the North Huron Sidewalk yeah. Project. That one, yeah. Well, and that, that specifically what Alder Grant is talking about. Yeah. Now, with that, I will say there were two <coughs> properly noticed meetings where that thing was discussed. The first one when uh, the request came in ordering the sidewalk study to be performed, and the second when we provided the results of the study, and council approved the installation of the walk and ordered all costs be assessed. When we're discussing, the only time we ever send letters out is assessments. Now, I'm not saying that's right, wrong, or indifferent, okay? I'm telling you what we have done in the past. Yeah. One thing I'm concerned with is adding layers to an already understaffed group of people. I am very concerned about that. But you had said it was infrequent. Well, that's why I, I'm, I'm looking for some definition. Is yeah. this only when it's a new sidewalk project? And that's the impression I got. I don't know. I'm, I'm I mean, not talk talking with her. To her about it. Yeah. So that would be what my, that's my interpretation of what she had said. A new sidewalk being put in. And if, if that's an interpretation that somebody on the committee wants to make, that, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm not going to make that leap. Okay. I mean, we, we could if you think that's we could ask staff to develop a policy on new sidewalks so that there be some notification to bring that back. Well, and I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that because <laughs> I was going to tell you in the director's report. But one of the things that when we were talking about the sidewalk on Sitka, I've told you that based on past practice, if there's an intersecting sidewalk on the side street, you don't have a corner lot situation. Yeah. But if there's not and it's discontinuous from the driveway, historically we treated that as a city cost. That's a past practice, it's a policy, but it's an oral policy that's been passed down to staff over decades, okay? There seems to be some confusion on that, so we are looking, that's one of the things I've been talking with Assistant Director Burnett on, we want to put that kind of a policy together and bring that policy through committee and get council approval on it, so that way we've got a document to go back with, and there's something there where it's not, well, I told Jim, and he didn't understand exactly what I was saying, so his interpretation is a little bit different than mine. No, let's get some criteria down so that we all know what we're dealing with. So that that's coming. Yes. Fairly soon, do you think? End of the year? I mean, Before the end of the year, yeah. Could we 
rope this into that and have it as an option that you know where where new sidewalks are to be installed homeowners are to be notified <laughs> oh we we definitely can have that as part of the, I think as that's part right. of the yeah, policy I, I again that, that would like, be great. i i've not spoken with alder grant so I'm, I'm not sure what well, exactly she's looking for. This at least gives some direction to it, and if we're wrong, she'll correct it. Because I I haven't spoken to her exactly about this, so. Yeah, I, I she called me on my way here, and um, I sent her a note just to confirm, but waiting. She's actually, she couldn't make it tonight uh, again, um, unfortunately. But um, I think that sounds good. I would make a motion to refer this to staff to consider when they Oh. bring back and she did respond yes on no. new sidewalks when you bring I forward your <laughs> sidewalk policy that new sidewalks Oops. clean it up for me <laughs> but the, you know the property owners are like beforehand or you know just look into that how that would work because like tonight they would have known right uh, on that street that we discussed they would have been notified hey correct it, that's what it's doing. Right. That's what's accomplishing. Yes, what it would have been five amount, letters or seven letters. the amount of time. What's that? Ahead of time. Well, I, I know that's that's what we need to look at. Is this is this going to cause such a red team conundrum, or is it going to be right? What's reasonable? Yeah, and then we don't want staff, you know, reasonable. government's already red team. Yeah. But we also want notification, so we got to find a sweet spot here. Well, it's hard when you get a bill. You know, you're told yeah, right. you're going to be paying this thousands of dollars. Sure. It is strange that if you have a sidewalk on the side, then they put one in here, now you got to pay for it. But if you don't have a sidewalk here, we put one in here, now you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> I don't want that. any of my streets, so <laughs> just so you know, I'll always vote against it. All right. Alder? Yes, uh, Alder Stoyer, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, I know I'm Director Vernier is looking at this could be a bit of a nightmare trying to get this information out to a lot of folks. There's other ways to do it. I know this, this might be a silly suggestion, but uh, you know, a lot of times um, when DPW wants to get some word across to the public, they'll put it on their bins. Now, is that silly or not? Just another alternative to get a message out on something like this. Although he said it was rare. So. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think work. The, the bins as a male, as a the garbage cart recycling mm -hmm. cart That's using it as a mail the or delivery. Tipper cart. Okay. No, that tipper cart. Gotcha. Well, there might be silly. There's there's approximately thirty three thousand stops that we make on a weekly basis, and we used to prepare uh, about thirty five to thirty six thousand pam uh, packages every year with copy of the DPW services guide, the recycling uh, and, and brush calendar, uh, a number of pieces of information that would be in the bag that we would tie to the handle of the cart. And over the next two weeks, out of the 33,000 that we delivered, we found about 31,000 of them still in the bag in the recycling cart. Yeah. I, oh. mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's the cool. yeah. So we actually ceased doing that. Now we just uh, try to get the information out through the city. Facebook page, post it on online, uh, through right. neighborhood associations. Okay. So again, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough when you try to get the information out. You know, everybody looks at it a little bit differently, but anyway, I'm fine with that. What, what I heard from Alder Weary was a refer to staff, the request by Alder Grant to require staff to send a letter to residents who have a financial contribution to new sidewalk projects right would that be that difficult i mean if you had certain projects you might have anywhere from 10 to 50 folks i realize it costs money to mail and all that type of stuff but well, you know if you're just doing concentrated oh. development areas Okay, he's it just, I'm sorry, Alder Story, can hold, just pause, because um, uh, Director Grenier is reading the proposed. Um, okay. So proposed. New, uh, new sidewalk projects included the city's capital improvement program, and to include in the new, side, uh, in the new sidewalk installation policy. Sound good? Okay, so we have a motion. Oh, Okay. All right. I'm, I'm good. 
you you're going to second it yeah i'll second that yes. okay so we have a motion by elder weary and a second by alder stoyer all in favor say aye aye, aye. and that aye. passes all right thank you um we will move on to number six and I, you know, I got con contacted by several people, so this is another one today, <laughs> by Alder Burnett, who yep. asked me to hold it because he hasn't been able to talk to all of his constituents. I got the same yet. communication from Alder okay. Burnett. So, motion to hold. All right, motion second. to hold by Alder Weary, second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, and aye. that passes, we will hold it. Thank you. All right, and then we're gonna go to um, number eight, consideration with possible action on request by Department of Public Works to enter into cooperative purchasing agreement with Cone Care in the amount of 129832 for repairs to the police station elevator. Director. Uh, the elevator at the police station has been out of service for quite some time. Uh, it's become a, a pretty serious problem over there and we need, do need to get it repaired. Um, <coughs> Kone has the contract for elevator service for a lot of the elevators that we have here, especially through the parking division and the ones here at City Hall. Unfortunately, police department is not part of that service agreement, so we did have to go out and solicit uh, competitive quotations because we're talking about uh, capital public construction uh, exceeding 25000 However, um, working with the, the purchasing department, uh, they were able to find that Coney is part of the cooperative purchasing agreement, so that is competitively bid. Uh, cost of the repairs is $129,832, and staff does recommend the approval of that contract. Okay, um, any questions? Was this something we previously bonded for, or approved, or what is this coming out of? It's coming out of the police capital of it is well. A little known fact too, they're going to have a little mini Dunkin' Donuts station in the elevator. Oh. <laughs> a little, little, little known fact. Oh boy. No, nope, maybe not. Am I wrong? I think <laughs> <laughs> right. like I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Move to proof. That was a Move bad joke. Cut. That was I a just, bad police I joke that they eat donuts all the time. Okay, so it. we have motion to approve by Alder Berry, second by Alder K. Oh no, you motion to approve. <laughs> yeah, I'll second it. Right? Well, whatever. Who said it first? Either. Make a motion to approve. Okay, Sorry. I'll uh, go ahead. Motion to approve by Alder um, Campbell, seconded by Alder Weary. And yeah. all those in favor say aye. Aye. And that aye. passes. Donut. Okay. Sorry, there was a little donut talk that threw me off here. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right, moving on to number nine consideration with possible action on request by Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement with ECS Midwest LLC in the amount of $25,206 for geotechnical soil exploration for 2024 reconstruction projects. Director? Uh, every year we need to hire a consultant to do geotechnical analysis and exploration for us as part of our design of our capital program for the following year. Uh, so we went out uh, and solicited quotations. Uh, quotation from ECS Midwest uh, is the preferred alternative. Uh, this is covered out of our capital program. Uh, and this is one that I know Alder Weary is going to take some appreciation of. Uh, we're coming for approval because it's in the amount of $25,206. Yeah. <laughs> it's $206 over our threshold. I didn't see any other bids on here. Maybe they're just not attached. Uh, We only got one response. Okay. All right. Any questions for Director Renier? Move to approve. Okay. Second. Move to approve. A uh, motion to approve by Elder Weary, seconded by Elder Campbell. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Aye. Okay, and that passes. Um, number ten. Report the award of contracts. So you're just reporting. Sewers 123 Mini Sewers to Highway Landscapers Inc. in the amount of $468,281. Correct. This is one of the contracts that uh, Council gave us the authority to award. Um, three bids received. 
Highway Landscapers was the low responsive responsible bidder in the amount of $468,281. So we executed the contract and work is going forward right now to get the contract signed, executed, so we can get them out there working. Okay. Should we receive and place on file? Motion to receive and place on file made by Alder Weary. Second. Seconded by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. Aye. Okay. <laughs> There's this delay thing. Okay. Number 11, re report the award of contract asphalt paving 2023 to MCC Inc. in the amount of $295,220.04. Again, this is one that uh, council gave the authority to staff to award at a staff level and report out later. Two bids received, MCC and Northeast Asphalt, MCC was the low responsive responsible bidder in the amount of $295,220.04. The other bid we received from Northeast was $510,210.75. Okay. Any questions? We're all looking for a motion. Make a motion to uh, accept the receiving award. Receiving place and time. Okay. Whoa. We, oh, he got in there. So. Um, Man. Motion made by Alder Campbell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All those nice in stuff. favor, say aye. 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 And aye. That, oh, that passes. Okay, number 12, report the award of contract sewers 223 basin repairs to Vinton Construction Company in the amount of $1,243,438.45. Second. Second. Again, another contract that uh, we were authorized to award at a staff level. Four bids received. Uh, Benton Construction was the low bid in the amount of $1,243,438.45. Uh, um, we were actually pretty surprised. that All four bids came in uh, relatively close to each other, so we're pretty happy with the numbers we received. So staff went ahead and made that award so we could get the work started. Okay. And I'm looking for a motion to receive a place on file. A motion to receive and place on file? Oh, sorry, receive a place on file. Okay. A motion to receive and place on file made by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. And that passes. Aye. Okay. Number 13, report the award of contract pavement 4-23 Burner Street Reconstruction to PTS Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $1,886,000. This looks like a nice round number to me. <laughs> <laughs> this, we, again, following a theme here, uh, staff was given the uh, ability to award at a staff level on this. Uh, we did want to bring this one to your attention. Uh, we were a little concerned about this one when we did it because it's a late season bid. Mm. Not a real big project, but late in the season we were a little concerned that the prices might be high. Um, low bid was $1,886,000 even. High bid was $2,636,926.30. I think we may have found a sweet spot with a contractor who had a crew or two available for late season work because this one came in a million eight almost a million nine sounds like a lot of money but this is actually below what the engineer's estimate for this project was so it's, it's below what we had in the capital program. the budget okay well so i like to hear good, that yeah. i will make a motion We're very to receive happy. and place on file so most, in my neighborhood motion to receive and place on file made by elder campbell second Seconded by Elder Weary. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. Number 14, report the non-award of contract parks. So non-award of parks. Yes. 823 20s Aquatic Center re-roofing. Uh, we received no bids. Wow. That's crazy. Nobody wants to re-roof it. Well, should we see the place on file? Okay, motion to Second. receive a place on file made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. What? Number 15. Oh, you got a question? Yeah, what happens to it now, uh, Steve? We will have to rescope the project and potentially rebid with a different scope. <sighs> Disturbing trend with roofing projects. Uh, we are not getting responses on it, period. 
Well, Nobody's pulling plans to even look at them. So, well, Assistant Director Burnett and I had a conversation about this this morning. We are going to be reaching out to uh, some of the larger roofing contractors here in the local area to find out if, if, is there a problem or are they just overworked? Too much work under contract already. Um, I will probably also be reaching out to the Brown County Home Builders Association to see if they might be able to talk to their membership. Um, we got to try to figure out what's going on, but it, it's a disturbing trend that I don't like seeing. Yeah. We got to start a new department. No. <laughs> no more. I'm too old to be crawling on roofs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, Number 15, report of actions taken by the Department of Public Works, granting of licenses, sidewalk builder Jerry Parham, underground sprinkler system, Rainmaster Irrigation Incorporated. So both those licenses have been awarded. We're just reporting that out. Okay, motion so motion. Motion to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file by Elder Weary. Second. Second by Elder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. So we've got informational director's report. Okay, well, I did give you the bulk of what I wanted to talk about under the director's report at various other opportunities during the meeting tonight. The only other thing that I did want to make you aware of, uh, two items. First one, uh, well, three items, I guess. Uh, no, first leaving. First, no, no. First yeah, one Yeah, because that tends uh, to be part of it. Yes. We are actively working on uh, our budget that we are going to be submitting to the mayor for consideration. Have taken uh, a couple of comments from Alders, but if you have any other comments or ideas, suggestions for us, please make sure you get those submitted into the clerk's office so that we can take that under advisement. Okay. Um, second item, as much as I don't want to admit this, uh, uh -oh. the weather is oh, starting no. to change, so we have started discussions relative to fall loose leaf cleanup and may, are making plans for that already. Uh, and then the third item, uh, former mayor uh, used to always tell us, you always want to end a, uh, a meeting on a high note, so you always oh, got to save a little bit of good news for the end. Uh, tomorrow morning, starting at 7 a.m., uh, Chris and I and a whole bunch of, you know, probably 30 uh, public works officials will be at Fox City Stadium in Appleton and approximately 100 to 120 drivers from around the state will be there competing in the annual snowplow rodeo. Oh, so wow, fun. We're going down for rodeo. Uh, the top two drivers from the state of Wisconsin uh, will punch their ticket to compete in the national rodeo in Loveland, Colorado. So uh, our fleet manager, Nathan Lockendock, is heavily involved in the rodeo. He's also the Wisconsin APWA chapter president this year, and Nathan will be traveling to Loveland to partake uh, in that snow conference and help uh, work at the snow rodeo. Uh, in addition, was well, that one of the two? The two travels? Or was well, the other one was a... Uh, There's uh, another one? There's a, a snow, snow conference. conference where he's teaching a class. Yeah. Classes. Um, so was there just the other one was in uh, South Dakota or North Dakota? Okay, yeah, that was just classroom stuff. And then he's also been selected to participate in, as an instructor at a, at a snow conference in Manitoba. So our expertise on snow and ice management here in Green Bay is being recognized both nationally and internationally. Awesome. DPW folks have to watch our base going to Vegas and Miami and like, hey, we're going to Manitoba and South Dakota. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, everybody else picks. Uh, everybody else picks conferences in, in. That's a little bit different than Vegas. More like purgatory. In those two places. Uh, uh, well, good so luck. Well, I'm I just curious. What is a rodeo? What do they do in the rodeo? Like, uh, well, gonna be a like a I don't path? Know if they still do yeah. the disabled vehicle or the ridge. Yeah, they're, they're vehicle inspection, to, and you have to tell the the judges what's wrong with the vehicle. As a CDL driver, you have to be able to know what yeah. the vehicle, not just drive it. So how do you determine that you in the coursework and like uh, there's points months. awarded or taken off for how long it takes, how many cones do you not go over that type okay. of thing? Yeah, so, so like the, historically, no, there, there's been a, uh, a pre-trip inspection where you've got to find what's wrong with the vehicle before you go out. Mm -hmm. There uh, historically has been a written examination and then there's an actual driving obstacle. 
that's tight. Hmm. And you um, do it with no snow? For our staff, we make it available to any truck driver. Uh, any truck driver who wants to participate can go ahead and do that. Um, and then there are certain staff members who've been working as judges as, as part of this effort for yeah, no pretty good in the past, if I remember correctly. Yeah. We've had some. We yeah. actually had two that went to the national uh, within the last ten years. Yeah, they're they're also one actually was a top driver in the state a couple of years back. Awesome. Um, and then I'm going to step outside of normal convention just a little bit. Um, just to let you know that uh, our annual public works exposition for APWA, our PWX, uh, there's over 6,000 public works officials from 13 different countries at 10, uh, is being held in San Diego this year, the week prior to Labor Day. Uh, and the director in De Pere and myself have been selected. We are doing a joint presentation there on intergovernmental cooperative agreements. So. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. You'll do fine. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you come back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think retiring. I'm just retiring. I'm staying there. Yeah. I do um, okay. One serious question, but are any roads not going to get done this year? Do I, is everybody along, progressing along pretty good and everything? All our projects? All our it's too early to tell. Okay. Like last year, one of the things we were running into is logistics, yep. being able to get materials delivered to the sites. Okay. Uh, I don't think the concrete has been as big an issue this year as it was last year. There's not been the, the same the concrete flat work. The subs is still an issue. But subcontractors. Okay. Okay, so um, I, I'm making looking for a motion. Receive and place and file. Okay, Alder Weary uh, makes a motion to receive and place and file. Second. Second by Alder Campbell. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that passes. So the next Improvement and Services Committee meeting is scheduled for September 13th. And I did hope, I mean, some people left before I said, it's going to council next Tuesday, but you know, <laughs> have to say that it's going to council next Tuesday, all those things that we voted on tonight. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourn. Motion to, made by Alder Campbell to adjourn. Second. Second by Alder Stoyer. And all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank aye. you. And we are done. <laughs>